Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab on here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here and I know I owe you all an apology because I've been gone for so long, but baby, I just want to show you all my new updated everyday makeup routine. Normally I would do lip liner and a gloss, but today is Wednesday. I have to go to work and being part of a union means we wear red every week. We usually try to do the t-shirt, but I'm extra and try to do the lips. I'm honestly late because I'm supposed to be out the door right now. So let's go ahead and jump into this baby because I'm about to cut this camera off. But before we get started, I hope you all are subscribed to the channel. If you are, I want to say thank you. If you aren't, go ahead and hit it, honey. Make sure you also give this video a thumbs up and please leave me a comment down below letting me know what type of content you all want to see next. But without further ado, let's jump into it. It's about four in the morning. I made sure I got up early today so that I could have time to record this for you all. Things have just been busy and behind the scenes, I've just been working constantly. They sent me back to work, which we've been doing, I'm going to say about six days a week. Sometimes it goes down to five, sometimes it goes up to seven, but I've just been tired. I've been busy. So much has happened, but we'll talk about that later. What I want to talk to you all about today is this foundation routine, and maybe it's not even a foundation, I'm gonna call it a base routine. Because if you check out a previous video I did, I'll leave it right here. Um, basically, I use this one product to help perfect my base, and something told me, Torrance, because this is such a close color to your complexion, see if it works as a foundation, and that product is going to be the MAC Paint Pot. I understand a lot of people use this as an eye primer, so do I. If you check out over 95% of my videos, you will see that that's what I use it for. The thing is, I always use this shade here, Soft Ochre. Soft Ochre and Painterly are probably their two most popular shades. You see there is a dip there, but look at this one here, which I got months after that. You can see this one, I've already hit pan on it because this is the shade Contemplative Slate, and she's so close to my complexion that one day I just tried to use it just to cover the five o'clock shadow area. As you can see, things are clearing up here. Baby, I let that beard grow out. Everybody was loving it, but the ingrown hairs was crazy, and it was just for a particular shoot. And once that was over, yeah, she had to go back to being shaved. But when I tell you this, Plus this Real Techniques 217 brush. What is she? The Expert Edge Foundation Brush. A beautiful, fabulous combo. This brush fits right inside of here. So what I do is just put it in, swipe up to the side, which is why that middle part is missing. And I take it and I put it over the five o'clock areas first because that's where I feel as if I want the most coverage. I just like to use this to even out the complexion and look at how that blends into my skin tone, honey. Like, she is not a perfect match. To me, she's a little more yellow than my complexion. But as far as getting things evened out, you can't tell me nothing. And look, you see that mustache area and how we got that redness around the nose? I'm gonna go around and get that too, honey. And I just slather it on. But you know, I am never scared of full coverage. But look at the way that just blended out for us, honey. She is coming through. And right now, we're just trying to blend. And I'm hoping that my camera has not stopped because it says it's still recording. But I don't see the video catching up with us. So we're just going to keep going and hope and pray we did not miss anything. And it's saying the connection was lost. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. The camera seems to still have been recording. The thing is, my laptop didn't let me see it. It was frozen. It said the connection was lost, so I couldn't see what's going on. 
So I stopped and as you can see, just my five o'clock area, you saw where I blended out over the mustache. Now it looks more like my complexion. You see there's much more um, hyperpigmentation right here on the cheek area than there, but baby, you see the way this color blends and where I really like to put some is right here underneath the neck, baby. I meant neck on the neck underneath the jawline. Let you know it's early. I think it's about four in the morning because I got to be to work by six. And what I like to do is just heavily put this on right here in this area because this is where I need the most coverage. Now, of course, like I said, I ain't scared of full coverage, so we gonna apply it everywhere. But I want to make sure I put the most in my trouble areas so when I go in to apply this everywhere else, I'm not overdoing it. So we're going to dip this back inside of here. I love that this fits inside of this container. And from there, we just going to slap her on, including the eyelid, forehead, and everything, honey. And the pros and cons about this product, for pro, the coverage, baby. When I tell you, she covers it all. Also, the longevity, because I normally use this as an eye primer, I know it's going to extend the wear of the products I put on top of it. I know that it's eye safe, so usually things that are eye safe can go on other parts of the body. And this helps prevent, not, I'm not going to say it helps prevent, it helps reduce the chances of creasing around the eyes, because baby, I don't believe there's any makeup product that can truly eliminate creasing on all skin types and textures. But when I tell you this bad boy does not play and you see the kind of coverage I am getting, one of the cons though I will give you is this stuff can dry down and be very hard to blend if you put too much in one spot and forget it and try to come back, honey. It can give you some troubles, but if you take your time, buff and blend, she will be beautiful. The spots that I tend to like to go in and get me a little more is right here in the cheek area. I'm usually so focused on the eyes and the jawline that right here in the cheek area, I tend to forget. But baby, look at the color on this. She is fabulous. And I'm just trying to make sure we have not forgotten anything because I am looking rather far and I'm sitting here like, Torrance, why can't you see? I don't get my Jessica Rabbit mirror. Don't let you know it's been a minute since I've done makeup on camera. Usually I'm just in the bathroom. I almost said the kitchen bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom mirror. And we're just trying to get it going and get out the door. But today, I wanted to remind you all that I have not forgot you. I still love you, honey. And we just buffing this out because once again, this can be a rather thick product, but because she gonna last all day, she gonna look flawless in the end, I just like to spend a little more time getting my base going. So now we just gonna look at her. And you can see I really extended the pan on this. Oh, you can see it from there now. But I love it and I am so glad during the Ultra 21 Days of Beauty, I picked up a backup jar because some days I really like to use this as an eye primer. But this jar, I promised myself we are going to finish that and we're going to hit pan and use it as a foundation. And I've also decided to challenge myself to do this with old pop concealers that are also my complexion or almost any concealer because the bottle is a lot smaller, the coverage is a lot higher, and it helps me get rid of products that I've just been holding on to. The problem is, when it comes to this shade here, Soft Ochre, she's beautiful. Everything, same way as this foundation shade. The problem is I cannot find the perfect brush to apply this. I've been testing many brushes and none seem to get it quite the way I want it. The Morphe M536 was way too big, so we're not even going to use her again today. The Colored Ring Small Angle Face Brush was just a little too big and not dense enough. I liked using the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer Brush, but I felt as if she might have added just a little too much coverage, 
For me, it was perfectly fine, but I think if someone else were to go in and try to use the same brush, it would add too much and it would be a little harder to blend because of how small she is, but I did like her. The problem is the brush that does the best job, but the brush I hate the most is the Real Techniques 421. This is the soft accent brush. The shape, the size, the density of this brush is beautiful. The way she blends is beautiful. The price, the look, everything is fabulous. The one problem I have with this brush, which makes it something I would never recommend to somebody else, is the fact that this brush hurts. When you are pressing it up underneath your eye, it literally feels like these fibers are stabbing you. I've tried to ignore it. I kept trying to say like, oh, maybe, you know, it's just dirty. Maybe you should clean. No, this brush hurts and it irritates my spirit because she does the job the best. I keep telling myself off camera, I'm going to test out the Real Technique setting brush as well as the Sigma P89 Baked Precision brush. But she looks a little small and dense. This looks a little big and fluffy, so I'm not sure. And I really wanted to use the It For Ulta Serum Foundation Brush, the 180, no, 131. But I think she's a little big too. So just because we're on camera, I'm going to use this brush just because I know it'll get the job done. But when I tell y'all, mm -mm, she stabs you in the eye. I don't care what nobody say. But we're going to go ahead, try to get this product on. She fits right in there too, but you see how most of that product is at the bottom. So I got to remind myself when I'm placing this down, I'll get it like that. My main thing is just creating dimension. So we're going to put just the tiniest bit in those other areas. Our main concern is getting right here and buffing and blending underneath the eye. I'm going to bring it down to about the nose and then blend it away. And for here, I want to come up the side of the eye all the way up to the hairline, but I don't want to take it on top of the lids. By leaving that darker, it'll give me the full look of possibly wearing eyeshadow without actually having to put in the effort and energy to apply any. Because lately, I just have not been feeling like doing eyeshadow. I feel as if it's the longest step for the smallest area. And the same time I can do a fabulous eye look, I can do an entire face base like this. Because baby, you see how this side is nice and lifted. This cheek looks bright. And because we brought it up right here to the side of that kind of plate of slate uh, color on my lids, it looks a little darker right there. And it gives me a slight look of possibly having eyeshadow. And I think I already said that. Maybe that lets you know it's early. I ain't had no breakfast, no coffee, no protein shake. The only thing I haven't had is water and toothpaste, baby. So, oh wait, I almost dipped again. Now we're going to just keep going. And because this side has had time to blend, I mean sit, you see how she a little tougher to buff out. But uh -uh, we're going to go ahead and get it. And today, I ain't going to lie, this brush does not hurt the way it normally would. So let's go ahead and get a little more. But she's still giving me troubles, like... You see that line still ain't completely gone. And that's the one con about this product is you usually want to pick it up as you need it and then go. But because I feel as if I woke up early enough today, I got time and energy to go ahead and play with this. So we're just going to keep going. And this is where it starts to hurt because I'm trying to buff that line out because she right there underneath the eye. Baby, we can't let you just sit. You got to really put some pressure down with it. And this brush is not the softest thing in the world to do so. I'll come in and try to buff the chin out. You see, she's sitting right there. Like, you can see that hard speck. She will buff. She will blend. But, mm -mm. honey, she takes some elbow grease. But when I tell you, oh, I didn't even mention. You see, I didn't even put a makeup primer down. Because I figured if you're an eye primer, honey, you should do everything I need a um, primer to do. You should give me... You know, reduce pores, longevity, things like that, combat oils, reduce creasing. I mean, everything I want a primer and a foundation to do, this does two in one. But baby, she take a minute to buff and blend. 
Okay, and we just don't want no harsh line right here in the center of the forehead where people gonna stare at us at. Or down the nose, honey. Cause you know I like to contour to look like I got a nose shot. And then what we're gonna do is stop, look, and see how well is this blended? How much more highlighting do we want to do? I'm just comparing both sides to see if I want to add a little more coverage. And I think underneath the cheeks, just because I'm extra, y'all, I think we're going to go ahead and do it. I know I don't need it, but y'all, I ain't gave y'all a tutorial in a minute. I just got my hair done yesterday. So, of course, you know, I'm going to walk into work feeling great. Uh, and I like to bring this up high, baby, sort of. Like I'm cutting the crease on the end, giving me a full wing liner, and then we're gonna buff this all the way up down the out because I want this to be bright, bright, bright. I want it to be brighter than my future, honey. I don't know about that, but <laughs> okay, and we just layering and caking it, honey. Oop, I got a rogue hair right there. Let's get her out the way because when we set, we don't want you to hold things back. And this is what we have so far, as you can see. This under eye baby, bright, bright, bright. And I'm just making sure I get all the product off my brush because ain't no plan of wasting any of that. Give myself a little more on the forehead just because I like people to focus right here. For powder, you know we gonna stick to our old school mixture, my Ben Nye and Sasha Buttercup powders. I love them. And why did I accidentally drop an entire jar? You see how full this jar is. Look at this one here. She fell down the stairs because I was sitting right there by the landing doing my makeup. The lid popped off. No, it was already open, but the little, uh, this piece right here fell straight out. You see she got a crack on her from when she hit the flow. My stairs looked ashy for about two, three days behind that because no matter how many times I swept and mopped, it was still a cast. And I was so hurt because that powder was out of stock at the time. You could not find it anywhere, so I had to be without it. It was terrible. We're going to set this with a new brush that I've been playing with. Um, this is the Ulta Beauty Tapered Highlight Brush, number 23. She is fabulous for getting powder underneath the eyes. You all know I love my KVD brush. Where'd she go? My number 25, my most used brush. But I've been trying to see, Torrance, you got so many brushes, so many things to play with. Try to find some new stuff. Where's my accent brush? Because we want to first make sure we don't have no creasing. And I don't. It's just habit has me making sure you go in and you sweep that out to be good. And we're just gonna bake, baby. I like to first make sure everything is locked down. And then we can come back in and add just a little more. And trust me, if you thought you loved Mac Paint Pots before, if you have the complexion for it and you tried this, please let me know. Because you're either going to absolutely love this technique or hate it. The only problem is they do not have enough shades for everyone. You see how I believe like their warm tone shades jump straight from the uh, soft ochre to the kind of plate of slate. And there are so many complexions in between that because they don't market this as a foundation. I don't think they were worried about getting exact skin tone shades. Ooh, we got another hair right there, baby. So what we're going to do is hopefully see if we can get Mac to add more shades to this because baby, when y'all see this final look, y'all going to be like, uh-uh, sis. I know Mac Paint Pot don't get you looking like that. And yes, they do, sis. So right now, I'm just setting everything and getting it all going. And because this is a lighter powder, I only want to put this in the areas I have that concealer shade. As a highlight, I do not want to put this on the lid like I normally do because that's going to lighten it. And I want my lids to appear a little darker than my under eye. So we're just going to use this. Grab the last of this powder and put it right in the center of the forehead. 
just to give us some depth and dimension, baby. We do not want our face to look one-dimensional, even though we're trying to look as soft and pretty as a porcelain doll. So as you can see, baby, that powder is fitting. We are baking because it's summertime, honey. Even in Michigan, the weather is hitting almost 90 degrees, so I know in other areas like Texas, Florida, Georgia, California, I can only imagine how hot you have things. But up here in Michigan, in New York, we've been getting the residual smoke from those Canadian um, wildfires. Baby, you talk about sitting in the house, and if you turn the air on, it look like... It looks like somebody having a bonfire in your house because the air is so thick, so cloudy, so smoky. It can cause breathing issues in many people. So I just been trying to stay in the house and avoid it, but you can't avoid oxygen, honey. We need it. So we're going to go in with the darker powder because this is the lighter of the two. And we're going to set the rest of the face. First thing I like to do to make sure I do not forget because I will, we're going to use the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. And we're going to use that, load her up on all sides, and then we're going to tap off as much as we can. And we are going to do the lids first. Go back in with our foundation brush. And I want to make sure I set this with that darker powder. And what I just do is close my eye and just stamp it straight on. I don't got time to play. I don't got time to wait. This is just baking, honey. going to take... See so just a few sprinkles of powder right there. You probably didn't even see that on there. It's just enough to set the eye. We don't need to bake this area. Oh, almost didn't wipe that off. Working too fast, honey. I like to do it right before I set it to make sure nothing's creasing or anything. And we're just gonna smack that on there. Bam, bam, bam. It'll cover everything. And we can just go back and get the rest of the face. After the eyes, my favorite spot to get is the nose because that is where I get the oiliest. So I like to make sure you at least got some powder there so you can sit the longer. And I'm not really worried about precision because we already have our highlighting powder down and we're going to dust that off. We're just going to go back in, press this in place in all other areas. For the contour areas, I usually only like or only care to set. If I bake, okay. If not, it's not bothering me. But it's those highlighted areas that truly need it. And we're just going to go around and press powder everywhere. Because when I go in and put other products on top, I really do not want there to be any tackiness from the skin. Although the eye primer does dry down, I don't feel as if it gets completely matte and dry. I mean, there's still some stickiness to it, which helps things like powder eyeshadow stick better, but I like an easier blend, so I like to set everything. And now what we want to do is just tap off our brushes and dust things off in the reverse order. I'm going to use the same brush that we put things down with to knock it off. And this just ensures that one, we don't have any excess powder down. And if for any reason we brush across an area that doesn't have any, she'll pick up a little bit because there's still powder left on the brush. And I want to make sure I get that nose last because I don't want to give my oils any chance of fighting back throughout the day. I'm going to the eye. Make sure she good. And then we're going to hit the nose. Bam. Highlighted areas. I'm going to dust this brush off too. And honestly, this little brush has been so surprising and so beautiful. I think I'm going to go grab another. I'm trying to wait till they have another sale because I think I picked this one up on sale. Just trying to see what she looks like. I'll grab this one and the blush brush. You see, I wanted to see if they had a small, medium, and large. I only saw these two sizes, but they're good enough for me. And we're going to just dust off our chin. Keep this well. Our nose, and just like with our size of the nose, 
we're going to do the eyes last because that's where we want the most longevity and that's where we have the highest chance of, of creasing. So we're going to dust this off. And baby, you can already see just how smooth and beautiful this is looking. Right? If I did not tell anybody that this was MAC Pink Pot, most people would think I just went in with foundation and concealer. And that's how we got everything going fabulous. I just like to make sure we don't have any excess powder. Because we like things to look full coverage. But if we can avoid looking heavy and cakey, which I don't mind, we will try to do so. Next up, we just stop and we look. And it's like, look at this base now. Compared to when we first started, baby, like, she's already given the glam, but since we couldn't be a plastic surgeon, we decided to be a makeup artist. Let's go ahead and perform miracles on this nose, because, baby, you know I like to snatch and contour. We're going to take my, baby, this brush been used so long, I don't even have the numbers on here. But y'all know I love this brush. It'll be in the description bar. We just got to go ahead and contour everything. KVD powder. This is the powder in the shade Subconscious. I promise you, if they ever get rid of it, it's going to be a sad day in the makeup world for me. Because I know nobody cares about it, but she's been my go-to for so many years that I would never want to be without her. You see, I like to go in first, create those harsh lines exactly where I know I want things to be. And then we'll go out and blend it out later. It's just, if it's already right there, I know exactly what I'm going to be buffing and blending. And it'll give me the most dramatic effect in those areas. So when you just sit back and look, you can tell I did one here at the bulbous tip right there. And one here at the bridge of my nose where the bone is. Because I feel as if right here in between those two spots, it just sinks in just the tiniest bit. And I don't want to sink that area in as well. And we're just going to go in and buff and blend those lines out. We do not want to erase them. Erase them. Baby, that ain't even a word. We do not want to erase them. We just want to soften them. So let's start off just blending right below it. Coming up and blending the edges of that harsh line. And you can see we're not done. But you can tell the difference between this side here, where we started to blend, and that harsh side there. So we're just going to keep on going until that line is barely noticeable. But because it's darker right there, it's going to now look like the sides of my nose instead of the top. We're just going to buff and blend this. And we're going to come over to this side and do the same. You just keep buffing, keep blending, keep erasing until things look snatched, baby. They're going to be asking me, who did that, Dr. Miami? Mm -mm, baby, this is your makeup. And we're going to make sure we hit these lines down here at the bottom. We don't want everything to just be coming straight down and it be the bright strip that goes all the way down and it comes straight through. Now, I want to stop that right here so it looks like the nose stops there. It doesn't have to be as harsh as the other area, but I don't want that bright strip to come all the way down. Some people like that look of having that little bright spot right there, but because I figure the tip of my nose is the largest part, I don't want to bring attention there. I'm going to just soften right here at the top of the nose because, baby, we don't want to have wide aglers. I believe that part of the nose is called the aglers. I know the surgery for it is called an aglar plasty, so that's what I think it's called. And we're just going to, I know this part is called the nostril, but I think the skin is called Ailer. But we're just going to buff that out and make sure she is contoured. And look at that. Baby, I promise you, I know people love cream contour, but to me, cream just never gave me the effect that I needed. Like powder does. Like, uh, baby, give it to me. And we're going to go in and we're going to do the same thing for the cupid's bow. Y'all know the lips are my favorite part of the body. And that's why we're wearing our red shirt today because at work on Wednesdays, we wear red. I know the show, not the show, the movie Mean Girls on Wednesdays, they wear pink. But because I am a part of a union, my brothers and sisters and I like to wear red because that is our union color. And it's just to signify our support for the union. This is contract year for the auto industry. So 
We are hoping to get a good, 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 good contract, honey. The better that contract is, the easier it is for me to get back to you all. Because the main reason why I have been gone is because I've been at work six days a week. And baby, ain't no point in line. We paying for a pay raise. Pay raise. We are praying for a pay raise. I have one coming in September, but with this new contract, that's going to last us about four more years. I'm hoping for another. Maybe the cost of living has gone up and I don't want to keep going another four years making just what I make. I want everything to keep going up. My, if the cost of living going up, I need my income to do the same. And with this, I'm just accentuating my cupid's bow, honey. I like to put a line right down the middle, same brush, one on each side, buff and blend that out because she's not harsh. Baby, look at that. Mm-hmm. Make my keepers bow look even bigger and larger and charger than what she was. And that's going to be that. I don't know why I put that brush there. It goes in my cup. Speaking of cups, because I like to store my makeup brushes in this cup that my friend Keisha gave me. The reason I'm doing my makeup early today is because I have to link up with her. She's one of my closest friends and she is finally back to work. I honestly think I should be able to be, well, <laughs> it is early. I honestly think I'll be able to bring you all more videos soon because I plan on switching over to third shift with her. That's going to be challenging because, baby, I have not been on nights in years. But I truly believe now that work is my main source of income, being on third shift will provide me a shift premium. So I'll be making more. I'll be available at night. So if I want to do a live tutorial or anything with you all... I'm up during the times that you all would be up. I, it'll be nothing to do a live tutorial or talk to you all 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the afternoon when most of you are available. When I started this video, it's 4 in the morning because I got to be to work at 6 and I know a lot of y'all are not going to be up if I were to go live. And I said all of that to talk about bring up cups. Look at this beautiful little cup that I made for myself. You all know I've been doing tumblers. On Wednesdays, I told y'all we wear red for work. We always try to do a red shirt. But I like to bring my tumbler with me. She says, call my union steward. Because if I have issues, baby, I know that's the first line of defense. And also, I made this little beautiful one here. It says, on Wednesdays, we wear red lipstick. A shirt is okay for most, but that's not enough for me. That's what it says in the front. All around it, she got lipsticks and lips everywhere, baby. She is fabulous. The thing is, she starts off looking clear, but once you add a cold drink to her, she turns red. And I think this is the one I'm going to bring to work today because I took that one last time. And so every Wednesday, I like to do my red lipstick. So that's how we're going to finish this look off. But before we do, I almost forget, honey, look at these cheeks. That goes straight from here all the way down. It ain't no snatch, no suction into that, honey. I need to look like I've been eating lemons and limes all day. So we're going to load up our... Real Technique Sculpting Brush. Baby, she's fabulous. And we're going to go ahead and add some cheekbones. Started from the top of the ear to the corner of the mouth and stopping right there by the outer edge of the eye. Just like to bring that line in. Boom. She look harsh now, but we're going to buff her out. But I need to make sure I see that there first because, honey, I need cheekbones. Okay, yes. And because we got a five head, we want to put the rest of that there and buff that out first so we don't have extra product just sitting around. Come on from the sides like this. This will help make my forehead look thinner because she is wet. And then coming from the top, I make my forehead look shorter. Baby, she sits up high. And we're just going to make sure we clear our brush. I like to put most of the product right here in the center where it catches the most attention. But we just want to buff the outer ends because we highlighted at first. Now we're contouring. Baby, look at the three-dimensional forehead we got going on now. Though she looks smaller than what she was a few minutes ago, but this is what we got to buff out because if we walk around with that on our cheek, mm -mm, that ain't going to be cute. So you're just small circular motions. Starting directly on it, buffing it up just slightly. 
We don't want to erase it. We just don't want it to look like a streak. And look at, ooh, baby. She is coming through for me, honey. Like, oh, you see how she look like a snatch sucked in cheekbone? Like, mm hmm. And I like to leave it just a little harsh right there. We're going to go in a little more because I'm going to put one more layer on top of it so it will soften up. But I need her to look a little more dramatic now. Babe, baby, you can't tell me nothing about this powder. I swear to God. The color, the blend, the build, I absolutely love it. So if they ever discontinue it, if they ever reformulate it, I am going to be hurt. But I'm going to also be the first one on it to try it if they reformulate it. Look at, oh, baby, we got cheekbones. Remember before I kept saying it goes straight up and down, but no more, honey. I need us to look lifted. I need us to look sculpted. Then we need to go in. My pole powder, look at her. She didn't hit pan too, but I refuse to get rid of her. I just take my brush and swim her all around the edge. Just like, give me some of that powder. I need some contour, honey. I need to just go ahead and crush this one up and create an eyeshadow with it because I have another one sitting right here. But considering she about to hit pan too, I just keep looking at it like, oh, honey, you do not want to use it all up. So we're going to go ahead, create us a sharp draw line, because baby, I've been trying to lose weight. I already have my oatmeal downstairs. I got my protein shake for breakfast. Because my birthday is in September. Hit the sides of this nose to clean off the brush. And then we just going to buff this in small circles. Once again, we don't want a harsh line. But we just want to buff it out so we can get a little more definition. And look at how much stronger that jawline look with this contour powder sitting right there underneath it. Baby, you going to think I got the jawline of Brad Pitt in this bad boy. I ain't as fine as Brad Pitt, I know that, but baby, we can have this level of confidence. Cause I dang sure don't got the money. And we just gonna buff, buff, buff. We want this to come through and sharpen things up, honey. And what I like to do, just cause baby, if you ain't got one, don't worry about it. I like to take a little bit more, look straight forward. And you see how we got this double chin sitting right here? I'm gonna lay back and put a little bit right there. Cause I need you to look darker and everything else. And we're just gonna pull her back a little bit until she starts to disappear. I like to just come back down and look and see, do I still see it a little bit right there? Get that too. Anything that hang up and out, you wanna make sure you cover. Cause if she look a little darker, she'll sink in and won't grab as much attention. Baby, I'm so glad that burp came out very silent because I thought she was going to fight back with me. I promise you. A lot of things go straight up in my head, but for some reason, a burp just... It freezes me up. I, I don't know why burps are just so disgusting to me, but I cannot stand them. I, I, I would rather you hiccup, I would rather you pass gas or anything, but I don't know why a burp just seems like ill to me. I think the only person who I thought was funny when they did it was Homer Simpson, but he was on TV. Other than that, no man. And we're going to just get a little bit on this chin going around it just so she look a little more brighter. We want the inside to sink, I mean come up, but this outside to sink in so she look three dimensional. Baby. We want everybody to know we got a chin, but we ain't trying to be Natalie none. What is next? What is next? Because, baby, I be trying to remind myself, Torrance, we keep this look simple. We trying to keep it basic. We don't want to do too much. But now that everything is here, the one thing I noticed in person is this looks a little too matte for my personal taste. So what I like to do is go in and soften things up with just a little more powder. The thing is, this brush may not have been the best for concealer. 
when I was busting her, because you see how big she is, but she was beautiful. It's called the Small Angle Face Brush by Color Rain. She was beautiful for cream blush because she fit right here all over there. And I'm like, wait, she is perfect for the cheek. So we're gonna take our Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder. Um, this is the shade two. You see, I've grinded her up into a powder and put her into a jar. I just, when I first got into makeup, powder, loose powder was what I was comfortable with. So a lot of times, a lot of products get turned back into that. We're just gonna take this and what I like to do, you see I got a lot of it right there because I like to dip my brush. We're gonna see if we can catch this on camera. We like to get our brush coated all the way around, pick that up, and then we're gonna swirl it into the brush. I want every bristle to be covered and I want some to be locked into this brush because what I find is with um, shimmery finishing powders, the more you blend and buff, the more coverage you get, the more shimmer you're going to get. Not necessarily shimmer, I'm going to say the more sheen you're going to get. And I don't want things to just look completely flat and dry. So where I like to start, because this is the brightest area and it's going to tell on me the most, and shade 2 matches my complexion, we're just going to start here and sweep underneath the eye and down on the cheeks. This is going to add sheen to the skin so it doesn't look so flat and dry. And because this powder does have a color, it's going to help even and merge all the colors underneath it together. So things like my under eye won't seem quite as bright even though it'll be bright. My cheek contour won't seem quite as strong and things like that. And so we're going to go in and do this all over the face, over the entire face with this shade too. And we're just going to be right back. Get that forehead sis. We can call it a forehead now because we didn't contoured it. And last, we want to take this above the top of the lids. Want to make sure they don't look dry either, honey. Almost forgot that area, I'm not going to lie. And then just anywhere else, just because we want to make sure we don't waste any product, any powder that's still on the brush, we're just going to go over, dust everything, just to make sure no area has been forgotten. And because that shade is number two, which matches my complexion, of course, we like to get depth and dimension going. So we're going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of shade number one. Most days I will skip it, but because we're on camera, see, I got the tiniest amount. We're going to dust this into the brush, pick her up, sweep her up real good. And then we're just going to take this and sweep it right underneath the eye just to help add a little brightness right here for this area. And I like to take it right here up to the sides of the eye just to make sure, once again, the lid look a little darker so that the under eye looks a little brighter. And we only want just that tiny one sprinkle. Most days I don't even do that much. But then we are gonna take shade number three, which is a little darker than me, and go over our contoured areas because we want to make sure there is depth and dimension. And for that, I've been loving the Sigma F25 Tapered Face Brush. I bought her simply because she's large and charged and was on sale. I think I got her for like either 40 or 60% off. Sigma has never let me down with brush quality. So we're just gonna take this, cover all areas of the brush with it. I had just a little tiny bit and we don't wanna do too much with this because I found I can go hand with it and baby, I'm gonna have a real good summer bronze. Main area is that cheekbone because that is where we contour. Pinch the brush just a little bit, hit the side of the nose because I don't want it to sweep up against my under eye area and make that dark. And then just out of perimeter of the face. The fab here has been shrunk to a forehead, but we still want her to get some. That jawline, and I might want to pick up just a little bit more. I know I just said I wasn't, but swirl this around and hit that jawline. That double chin could use a little bit. Sides of the neck, too. And honestly, I forgot to contour the sides of my neck, baby. That lets you know I'm racing because I never forget that. Okay, what else do we have next? We have eyes and brows. 
I like to keep this a rather simple. We don't have much to do. Normally I will go in, I'm doing eye primer, all those other things. We haven't been into it like that, honey. We just gonna skip eye primer. I'm gonna use my e.l.f. Lash and Brow Wand. This is just my most affordable spoolie. And I like to just comb out my lashes first, just to help make sure nothing's tangled, nothing has excess powder or product on it. So that when I go in with my mascara, she doesn't clump and get dirty too fast. And I just really enjoy doing this step because it helps you really get comfortable with applying products to the lashes. And although off camera, I really like to use my Pillow Talk push-up lash sample. She is fabulous and I think I'm going to get the full size of this. Because we're in a rush, I don't have time to sit there and play with that because I know she's almost dry. We're going to use the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. I forgot I had this sample and this big old wand does not play. She gets the job done. And this is a fabulous mascara. To me, the Pillow Talk one looks much more natural. And has everybody wondering, are those really your lashes or are you wearing uh, falsies? With this Kush Mascara one, baby, she don't play. She make your lashes jump out so well that people are going to be able to tell that you're wearing mascara. But I don't mind because they can tell how fabulous it has my lashes looking. And she is a thicker mascara, which I like. But she does not play when it comes to that coverage, honey. She is going to bring it. Okay, we got the bottom. Let's get the top. And look at that. Look at the bottom lashes on camera. Baby, I'm giving Twiggy vibes. Like, yes. Hunty, hunty, hunty. Look at those lashes. When I tell you, they look fabulous. But I can tell it's been a minute since I did my mascara on camera. Because I smushed it a little bit on this set. But we're going to clean that up. What we need to do. Oh, baby, I almost forget. Brows. We don't have time. We don't have energy to be worried about all of that. Some ABH Clear Brow Gel. She close to the end. So we're just going to go straight in. Y'all know normally I prefer a disposable spoolie. But this thing is barely damp anymore. And so I just like to brush me straight up. And then take the tail and bring her down just a little bit. Any sparse hairs that aren't lined up. And that's good enough for me. The fact that I have full brows but take the time to try to draw them on, it's like, yeah, sis. That's what you do in some free time. When you headed to work and you just trying to get it on, get it out the door, make sure it lasts. Ain't no point of dealing with brow pencils, brow waxes, dip, none of that, baby. We just gonna take this gel, lock her in place. So it looked like we just got our brows trimmed. And that's gonna be that. Also, because that mascara has now had time to dry, we're going to take a Q-tip and we're going to clean this up. I like to do the bottom first because that's where I apply first. I figure I get more sensitivity and risk watery eyes doing the bottom, so I like to hit those, get those out the way, and then do the top. Any mascara that may have smudged on the lid while I was applying it, we're going to get that. And then to finish off the eyes, my favorite brown eyeliner. I used to claim demolition all the time because I would be doing dramatic eye looks and I wanted my eyes to stand out. But on the days I'm not wearing mascara and I just want just a tiny bit of help, um, whiskey. Urban Decay Whiskey, she's a lighter, like I'm going to say a medium brown, not a dark brown. She is fabulous. And she's just enough to give you something to the eyes without taking over because if I were to go in with demolition, it would be so dark that I think the eyes would take over this entire face look. And I just want them to be complimentary. Like, you see how this side is just a little... Baby, I'm not sure where my camera stopped recording. I think it recently just stopped because I seen a flash go up. So I'm hoping the only thing y'all missed was this eyeliner part. I went in. Just add it a little bit like this. Nothing serious. Just so you all can see that this side 
is much darker than this side that I haven't applied anything to, but she's not so much that she's like, ooh, look at my eyeliner. And that's what I like about this because I know a black would definitely take over, but so with that dark brown on such a, what I'm going to call a soft look. You know what, I can't do this on this side, so I'll be right back. Okay, eyeliner is on, and I'm looking around. I'm trying to make sure, Torrance, is there anything else? Two things, highlighter and lips. MAC Old Darling, you all know, like, let's not play. We doing MAC for foundation and things like that. This is my favorite highlighter of life. I just had to kick those cracks off. And ain't no point of plan. We just got to get her going. MAC 212 brush, no, 242 brush. We're just gonna dip her in because my favorite area to do is my inner corner, baby, because I want you to be focused right here in my eyes when you talk to me. So I like to hit that inner corner up. A lot of people like a matte shimmery, I mean a matte brow bone highlight, although they are beautiful. I ain't gonna lie, this shimmer one just does it for me. That inner corner just, she's fabulous. So we're just gonna dip one time take what's left and just hit the highest point of my brows and buff that up and out because baby she's fabulous then we are going to take our i would say i don't have a fan brush you know i got one i can't even read what this one is either this is my it for ulta one i done had her so long and you know we got to add a little highlighter. Just a little. Nose. Oh, you see that? But my main area is this cupid's bow. I like to do the most right here. Because my lips are my favorite part of my body, honey. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And then whatever's left after we add a little more, we're going to do the cheek. Yes. Baby, I love a good highlighter. I ain't gonna lie, I prefer contour over highlighter, but it just adds that last little bit of glow. Whatever's left, we're gonna take and just dust over the top of the brow and around the sides of the face so that glow connects to the cheek. Chin can get a little extra. Nose can get a little extra. Honey, all the cheeks can get extra. And we're gonna keep that moving. Last but certainly not least, honey, the lips. Everybody likes to wear red shirts at work, but on Wednesdays, I can always be spotted. Everybody knows my lipstick will be seen. Favorite combo, simply because I know I need something that's going to last all day, something I don't have to touch up, is my lip pencil, the Lip Bar Straight Face. Love it. Max Ruby Woo, love it. The thing is, Unless you are a fan of truly, truly matte, 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 matte lips, this may not be the one for you. She is a retro matte, which means, baby, she does not play. A lot of people just call her straight up dry, which I understand. But it's because of that factor that she's so bold, she's so beautiful, and she lasts so long. But if you have any signs of dryness in your lips, you may not like and appreciate her but I can switch it up. Sometimes I do the Aaliyah MAC. She's much more of a cream sheen, so you will have to reapply that Aaliyah one. I love the um, Lip Bars Boss Lady. Um, I love the Fenty Beauty Uncensored. Um, it's just so many reds that are fabulous out there, but this combo is usually at work with me with this lipstick holder because then I can put these two in here, carry them with me. So when anybody, what lip are you wearing? My Mac, honey, you already know. Baby, because I'm a diva. I'm extra. I got to. So we're just going to take the straight face and we're going to line things. And for my face, the right side is slightly smaller than the left side. So what I like to do is overline my right side just the tiniest bit. And then I like to actually line my left side. So I start off lining it and then I go in and add a little more to take it over. And the thing about this is at first she doesn't look dark enough. 
But once you get everything on, she will come together. Baby, my stomach is growling. And you see how I'm trying to even that out. This side here, I lined the lip exactly, but because my left side is naturally larger. Like my eye is larger on this side, my lip is, my cheek sits up higher, my brow. This left side is just my dominant side of my face. So we always try to get things to look symmetrical. I'm just doing a little more on this side. Same thing on the bottom. I'm going to line the left side, but overline the right. And this color at first, you'll be looking at it like, that's dark enough for that red? Baby, she is. She's fabulous. And now for the lipstick, honey. Max Ruby Woo. And when I tell you, it would not surprise me to find out that this bullet is between 5 and 10 years old. This is the oldest one I get with this packaging here. I can't tell you how old it is. And I know I got about three or four of these because every time they come out with a different packaging for it, I get it. But it is just something magical about this lipstick. Baby, she ain't dried down. She don't have a funny smell. She glad she feels just as fabulous as the day I got her. And look at that. Baby, and when I tell you, just doing that one layer always gets me going, but I'm the type where I'm going to add like two, three layers because I want opacity. So you go in first and you get everything coated. And that's what that first layer looks like. But is that bold enough for me? Is that red enough for me? Not at all. Let's keep going. And I just keep lining and keep going closer and closer to my lip liner to make sure this is a red lip. Uh -huh. Second layer coming through. We're going to go in one more. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Look at her. Oh. Tell me she's not loud. And it looked like I might have smushed it just a tiny bit on one side. I think it's, it's the camera is saying this side here. That ain't a smudge, boo boo. That's a lip crease. But what we're going to do is clean things up just to make sure our lips look perfect. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But because I'm home and I'm extra, we're going to say, why not? Take just a little bit of our Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Add a drop of that to the back of my hand. This is the angled liner brush from It For Ulta, the, what are you, number 122. And we're just going to use this to clean up anything that we think is not perfect with the lips. Most days I don't need to do this, but because we on camera, why not? I want to see if y'all can see this. We're just going to come to the side right here and just, and I think you can see that liner that I've created and honestly, with lipstick, that harsh line does not matter. It actually helps things look a little better. But what I want to do is get it on first and then we're going to buff it out. I mean, by adding this concealer there, that brightness of that color helps your lips to pop a little more. And I'm going to just use this uh, smudger brush to blend that up because she's very tiny. So she reduces the chance of me making a mistake. Crisp, sharp. If you want to do the top, you can. And I'm looking at the camera, baby. It's almost time for me to be up out of here. So what we got to do is buff this last thing out and be gone. Okay, so what we're going to do just to make sure that doesn't look so dark is we're going to go back over with our brush that had the number two powder on it. 
and just hit that around the edges. This is much more to our skin tone and it won't leave that dramatic effect. But because we got to get up out of here, honey, you all already know the routine, so let's get things going. It's been a minute, but I'm quite sure you all still remember Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter, so things will last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. I'm gonna give this a few more moments to dry it out and I'll be back to show you all the final look. And here's the final look. I'm gonna go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you all, honey, I absolutely love this look. She's feeling and looking fabulous. She's full coverage. She's going to last all day. But I can't lie to y'all. I got about three minutes to be out the house and the clock just said two. I still got to record an intro and get screenshots for a um, cover photo. But I love you all. Stay tuned. Oh, last thing. Please leave me any comment down below because nobody has still claimed the giveaway prize and I almost forget that was the reason I came on here. Let you all know things are doing great. I don't even know if I'm going to announce the giveaway this time. I think I just want to leave it for those who are genuinely going to watch the video, be subscribed, and enjoy the content. So any comment will get you going. It will be international. It will last for one week because I'm trying to get rid of this prize because I have another surprise coming for you all. But like I said, I got to get up out of here. So remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.